Hello ZBrush community and welcome to another edition of Did You Know That? My name is Joseph Drust and this is a quick continuation of the Z Classroom tutorial on using GoZ and 3D Studio Max. This tutorial will cover setting up a quick scene for Mental Ray inside of 3D Studio Max to enhance the render of your GoZ exported model. We left off last time after importing our model with GoZ into 3D Studio Max. And here we have our model in 3D Studio Max. We left off putting turbo smooths on the individual parts of the model in order to get a little bit more smoothing out of the mesh. One thing I forgot to mention during the last video is I wanted to show that the normal maps are actually applied to the mesh as well. So if we take the eyedropper here and just pick any of our subtools, you'll see that it's loading the shell material. And if we clicked on the bake material, we have our diffuse map. But down in the bump slot, we have a normal bump being loaded. And in this normal bump, the normal is actually loaded. So not only do we have the texture and the displacement loaded, but there's also a normal map loaded on this model. So at any time you need to reference any of these kind of maps for another material, you can access them because they're already loaded inside 3D Studio Max. So what we're going to do in the second part here is we're actually going to set up a quick mental ray scene to render your model out. If we click the render button now, we end up with something like this. Um, our max model isn't illuminated very well, it's just using the global lights that are in the scene. So we want to add a little more, you know, direct lighting, indirect lighting, and maybe some HDR to kind of make your model pop a little bit more. To start off, since our model is, you know, quite a few faces, we're actually going to see how many right now. I'm going to put statistics on quick. To do this, you just right click on perspective, go to the viewport configuration, and go to st statistics. And then down here you can do polygon count, total plus selection, and application show stats in active view. So this model has 701,000 polygons. Now if we click render with mental ray, it's going to take a little while to render this model. So we're actually going to do a lot of our testing with a stub mesh in the scene. But to start off, we need to throw a camera into our scene. To do that, we're going to go over here to the modify modifier menu and we're going to click on this button here and go to the camera options make sure it says standard in this Dropbox and then choose free and we're just going to click anywhere on our scene and it'll draw a camera now I could come in and actually rotate this camera and position it to face the model but since we're already in a perspective scene all we have to do is hit control plus C and the camera will actually snap to our perspective view so now if we come up to the perspective slot up here and right click and go to cameras and camera 01. So now we're actually attached to the camera in our scene. If we hit shift plus F, we'll get a nice framing of the scene. And this will frame to the format in which you have set for the render. And now we can actually zoom and pan our camera a little bit just to get our model into a more positionable pose for our render. So something like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a skylight. To do this, this will give you global illumination on your model. To do this, we're going to go to the modifier menu again, click on lights, and go to standard, not photometric, and choose skylight. So now with the skylight button depressed, we're just going to come to the center of the world and click and now we've generated a skylight for our scene. We're be just going to take this and move it up to the top of the model. Now if we render this, we should get global illumination values. The problem right now is our mesh is 701,000 polygons because we applied the turbo smooths to it. Now if we were to render this and try to do tests with this model, it's going to take an extremely long time to render every single time we want to do a test. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the turbo smooth modifier now off the model. To do that, just grab all your meshes, come over here to the modify menu and you should just have one turbo smooth and just delete it. So now our mesh is down to 87,000 polygons instead of 700. Now another thing since I have all these pieces I really just need to test it with the body and maybe the hands. So I'm going to go ahead and just click the hands and click the body and then click the light on top and then do a hide unselected. And so now I just have the base of this guy, which should be enough for me to check shadows and other elements in the scene. 
So with this skylight in the scene, we're now, we now need to turn on GI. So we're going to go up to the Rendering tab at top, go to Rendering Setup. And then in the Indirect Illumination tab, we're going to come down to Caustics and Global Illumination. And make sure GI is turned on. Um, we're just going to leave everything default right now. There's plenty of tutorials online to kind of give you examples and uh, numbers on what these actual uh, things do and uh, what they actually do to your scene when you render. But right now we're just going to go straight vanilla and uh, just click the render button. And so as you can see it renders fairly fast without all the other objects in the scene. And you can see he's now global illuminated across the entire uh, surface of his body. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to load an HDRI map, a high dynamic range. So we're going to go first up to rendering and go to environment. And in the environment tab up here, there's a comma parameters and an environment map. So we're going to click on none. And this little browser window should come up. We're going to go to bitmap. And now we're going to go to an HDR. I have quite a few that I've just collected over time from the internet and different programs. So I'm just going to load one quick. This is Kitchen. There should be some that actually ship with 3D Studio Max. By default, this is the settings you'll probably end up seeing. Um, down here is displayed scale colors. Normally, off the start, it's set to 1. Um, for this, I want to bump up just the uh, colors some, so I'm just going to hit 2. Once again, there's tons of different options for this, and people have different methods of controlling the exposure for the HDR map. So if you need more information, um, there's just Google search it online, and I'm sure you'll find tons of stuff. But right now, these are the settings I'm going to go with, and then just colors by two. I'm just going to hit OK. And as you can see, now it's loaded into the slot over here. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to our material browser. So we're going to open that up. And I'm going to take this map here and drag it to an empty slot. And then we're going to make it an instance. Now up here we have our map loaded. As you can see it's set to environment and this mapping is screen. We want to change this screen to spherical environment. So this will give us our HDR map as a sphere loaded into the scene. So that's good. We're good there. We're just going to close this out. And now we're going to click render again. And so here we have our model and the HDR image is visible in the background. Now these images may look kind of the same from the other one that we did with just the GI. You may not notice much difference. So we're going to now generate a test object. So we're going to go over here to the side and go to geometry, standard primitives, and grab a teapot. And we're just going to draw a teapot in our scene. I'm just going to place it right here. Then we're going to go back to our material editor, pick a blank spot. Over here where it says standard, we're going to click it, and we're going to come down to this metal ray arch and design. And we're just going to click that once and hit OK. This should load this metal ray material setting right here. Where it says select a template, we're just going to come down to glaze ceramic. We're going to change the color to white. We're then going to make sure we have our teapot selected, and we're going to hit click make sure this material is selected and we're going to hit assign material to selection. So now we have this teapot with the ceramic, glaze ceramic material applied to it. And I'm just going to move it over to the other side over here. And now I'm actually going to hide this model here and we're just going to use the teapot for our uh, rest of our lighting calculations. So we're just going to hide selected and now we're going to hit render. And here we have our teapot with the scene loaded. If you zoom in onto the teapot, you can see there's actually environment data from the HDR map being applied to this mesh. So that's exactly what we want. Next, we're going to create a uh, box for this teapot to kind of live in, for our model to live in, and kind of do some ray bounces and create a background for our scene, because we don't really want that HDR image as our background. To do this, we're going to come over here to standard primitives again and we're going to go to Extended. We're going to choose Chamfer Box. We're going to open up the keyboard entry and we're going to make sure these first three X, Y, and Z are all zeros. On the length one, we're going to type in 500, width 500, height 400, and then maybe a fillet of 50. And we're going to hit Create. 
And what this did, we're going to zoom out here and go to a, another view. What this did is it created a chamfer box around my scene. And the box is actually positioned at the world origin. So now we need to turn this box inside out. So we actually use it as a interior space for our lighting. So I'm just going to make sure this box is selected, come up to the actual modify panel, and it has, should have chamfer box up here. I'm going to right click that and where it says convert to, choose edible poly. Then I'm going to go into polygon mode, hit control A, which will select all my faces. And then underneath the edit polygons area, we're going to hit flip. And this should now have flipped all those faces so the box is now inside out. We're going to get out of polygon mode. As you can see, it's flipped, but it's still displaying as black. This is because back face coal isn't active. So it's displaying the black faces of this mesh. To get rid of this, we're just going to make sure we have the mesh selected. Right click, go to Object Properties, and then where it says back face coal, just turn that on and then hit OK. So now you can see our chamfer box is flipped inside out to kind of give us our background for our scene. We're going to now select the box and we're just going to put a turbo smooth on it just so we get some of this uh, gradient value out of the back here so it gets a little bit smoother. So we're going to come down to turbo smooth again, we're going to hit that, and we're just going to maybe put two to three iterations of turbo smooth on the model. So I'm going to go back to my other views again and go back to my camera scene. And as you can see now, we now have a skylight, we have our teapot reference mesh, and we have a background of this chamfer box. So I'm going to go ahead and hit render. And you'll notice the scene is entirely black. This is because the skylight, which is outside this box, is trying to project light into it. And since it can't go through the box, you're not getting any light on the inside of this area. So to fix that, we're going to select our chamfer box again. We're going to go right back to Object Properties. And we're going to go to this Metal Ray tab over here and put Pass Through Invisible to FG. And we're going to hit OK. And now, we're going to hit Render again. As you can see, now we're actually getting lighting into our scene. As you'll notice on the teapot, though, you're not getting the HDR lighting you once were, that specular value you had. It's just bouncing around in the box and casting itself onto the teapot. So we need to fix that, too. So back to the chamfer box, right click, go to Object Properties, go to the General tab, and then come over here to Visible to Reflection and Refraction, and just unclick that checkbox, and then hit OK. Now hit Render again. And now you see our teapot is rendering with the global illumination and has the HDRI reflecting stuff going on the mesh. So we also have this nice artifact right here in the background. We're going to fix that too. Um, to do this, we just need to rotate our chamfer box just a little bit because it's you're getting the corner of the box in the scene here. So we're just going to take the rotation button up here and we're just going to go to our, make sure our chamfer box is selected and just rotate it a little bit so we end up getting that background out of there. So we just get a straight backdrop of just gradient values. And we're going to click render again. So now we have our basic scene set up. The blue is nice, but we probably want to put a color on that as well. So with the chamfer box selected, go to your material editor. We're going to pick another blank spot. And we're going to click the diffuse here and choose a color. Um, something a little bit darker. So maybe around 30, 30 something. We've got 37. I'm just going to hit OK. And then we're going to make sure we have our chamfer box selected again and hit this assign material to selection. So now we have a little bit darker backdrop and nightless blue. And we're going to hit render again. And this is what you should end up getting. Almost perfect. We're almost there. So now we have our indirect lighting set up. But we kind of want to put like some highlights and maybe a, like a keyframe light into our scene. To do that, we're going to come back out to our windows again. In the top view, and go back to that, we're going to create a spotlight. So over in the Create menu, we're going to go to Lights again, 
and we're going to choose metal ray area spot and we're just going to take this and we're going to start it up from this corner around here and we're just going to draw it into the scene then we're going to rotate as you can see the light is going through the floor right now so we need to bring that up and so now we have it kind of casting down onto the teapot we then need to go over here to the modify menu with the light still selected we're going to change the intensity and color to something around 5. We're going to make sure the color is set to white. We're going to come down to spotlight parameters and we're going to change the hot spot beam to 43 and increase the fall off to around 120 something. We'll try 126. So as you see now, we now have a wide beam on our light for our fall off. So this is giving us less of that direct kind of harsh lighting and more of a unified spotlight across the model. Next thing we want to do is we can actually test render this and we'll see what we get. So here's our scene now. We have a nice kind of gradient value in the back. Our teapot's still getting the HDR lighting plus the actual spotlight that's in the scene. As you can see these shadows on this teapot are very harsh so we're kind of going to want to tone those down a little bit. So go with your spotlight still selected, come down to the bottom here and go to the area light parameters. Make sure this is on. We're going to change this to disk and then we're going to adjust the radius here. The higher the radius, the less sharp the shadows are going to be. So we put in say like 120 and hit render. You can see our shadows are not as sharp as they were. If we go down to 1 and hit render, we're going to end up with really, really, really sharp shadows. So I kind of like that 120 where that was at. So we're just going to go back and change that to that. So there we go. We have our mall in the scene. We have this nice gradient value going in the back. Looks pretty good. So now we need to actually unhide our model in the scene. So we're just going to right click here and do unhide all. So now you can see our model should be in view. This render is going to take a little bit longer than the last one, so we're just going to hit render. And we're going to wait this one out so just so we can see where we're at now with our lighting in our scene. And there we go. It's actually rendering now. This background's a little bit light for uh, what I want it to be. I'm actually going to just would like it more of a black rather than a gray, so we're going to turn that down. Uh, as you can see, the HDR stuff is still being rendered and reflected on the teapot, so that is good. So now that I have this, I need to get this background a little bit darker. And that our scene's working, we don't really need this teapot anymore, so I'm just going to click the teapot and then press delete. And now I need to select my skylight again. So I'm going to come up here to select by name and select sky and hit OK. Over here now in the modify menu, I'm going to see where it says skylight parameters and it has a multiplier. I'm just going to type in 0.5. So it's going to be about half of what this brightness is here. And then we're just going to do a quick test render on that. And there we go. Now our background is actually more of a black. So we have a little more contrast in our image is what I was looking for. Now since I took the turbo smooths off, uh, some of the stuff may look a little angular. Um, we can put the turbo smooths back on. I was just doing it more for a test right now and didn't want to wait a uh, while for the whole thing to render. So I've got most of the lighting where I want. I still maybe want a light right here in the front, so I'm just going to put a uh, fill light in quick. I'm getting a lot of bouncing in the scene, but I kind of want a little more light on the front of the model. So I'm just going to come back to the viewports again, and I'm going to go to top mode, top view. And I'm going to come over here to the create menu, go to lights, standard, and choose Metal Ray Area Omni. And then I'm just going to click somewhere adjacent to the spotlight on the model. About right there. I'm going to rotate this view quick and kind of pull it up to around, say, head height on the model. We're actually going to move my camera in too a little bit. So I'm going to go to the camera window here and just put the pan and just move that in a little bit. So you get a little bit more of the model in the scene. And now we go back. And we need to select that light now since I actually 
Actually, no, I still have it selected. So make sure you have your light selected, and we need to go to intensity and color. And we need to turn this down quite a bit because it's actually blowing out the whole background, as you can see here. So I'm going to put this to about a 0.4. Now, this may have to go a little bit lower. Um, right now, it still looks like it may end up blowing out the background again, and I kind of wanted that to be black. So we're going to do a quick test again. But actually, we need to set a few more parameters on this light. Um, I don't want any shadows on this, so I'm going to make sure the shadow stuff is actually turned off. So in shadow parameters and up here where it says ray trace, we're just going to turn that off because I just want to use it as a bounce light rather than an actual light that's casting shadows onto the model. And we're going to come and hit render again. And there we go. The scene is now rendering. So you got a little more illumination now on the face from that bounce light. So you can see a little more of the structure and the detail that's in the model. Uh, the background's not too black, but it's not super gray, so I'm all right with it. And there we have it. We have a little quick lighting setup for the model. All spit out with models and materials from GoZ inside a ZBrush, and then just quickly rendered inside a Metal Ray. Now there's a few more things you can do here to get your quality of your render a little bit better. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is come up to the rendering render setup and in the renderer tab we're going to scroll down to the bottom here and check out this displacement tab down here. Now the edge length number here determines how sharp the actual displacement will be. So at edge length 2 you're going to get pretty good results. The lower the number the better the displacement map is actually going to deform the mesh. So I'm going to take this and set it down to 1. And then the next thing I'm going to do is in this window there's some of these sliders down here at the bottom. Now these are going to increase your render time but they will also increase the quality of your render. So I'm just going to change all these settings that are set to default to high quality which is two times. I'm just going to go through and do that. And then I'm going to change my final gather precision from draft up to medium. And now we're going to click render again. And this is going to take longer than it did last time just because we've increased the settings and the precision that the render is going to use. So we're almost done here now with the render. One thing I forgot to do was uh, turn the Turbo Smooth modifiers back on the mesh. Um, that will give you a little more uh, smoothness and clarity to some of your deformation uh, displacement maps. Also forgot to go over a little bit some of the settings that uh, you can set in your rendering uh, setup just to get a little more quality out of your image. So, looks pretty good so far. Um, we're, we're getting closer, we just need to put the turbo smooths back on, so I'm just going to close this. going to select all the meshes again in the scene. So, lens down the straps, hit OK. And over here in the modifier list, I'm going to go and put a turbo smooth on. Just keep the alliterations to one. You can do more if you want. The uh, more alliterations you have, the uh, longer your rendering time is going to be. So, for this one, I'm just going to do one right now. Next, I'm going to come up here to Rendering Setup again. This is where we turned on the actual global illumination uh, setting before underneath the uh, indirect illumination panel. So you want to make sure that's on. Um, up here in the Final Gather area, you can increase some of these sliders up here. Um, this density and rays will just increase on how many light bounces and uh, things happen in the scene. Right now, our diffuse bounces, we're getting zero per bounce. So I'm going to up that to, say, around 32. So this will let light bounce around the scene a little bit more before it stops. It will give you a little more bounce lighting from your box and the world environment under your model. And the other things look pretty good. Um, there's tons of information for this stuff online, and it'll break down, you know, what actually all these dialogues actually do. Next thing, you just want to make sure you have your global illumination on. We're going to go over to the render tab. We're going to make sure ray tracing is set to BSP2. This will make it go a little bit faster. Your other option is BSP. Um, it's just your choice. Also, uh, turning off scan line will also increase your rendering time, uh, or decrease your rendering time rather than increase it. And once again, tons of mental ray forms and a huge community to kind of you know tell you what all these settings do but those are just some quick ones to kind of get you started so now that we have our turbo zoomed on and we have those settings kind of clicked we're going to do one final render of our scene so just going to hit render and once again this model was brought in straight from zbrush 
um, using GoZ. It was fully poly painted inside ZBrush and didn't, I didn't have to attach or uh, create any additional outside maps in order to uh, generate what you're seeing here. And I probably should have rendered this a little bit bigger for essence of speed it's rendered this size. If you do want to render this larger your scene, this is how you do it in 3 cu Max. If you go to rendering, render setup, underneath common there's an output size here. Any of these presets through here will give you different numbers you can click in or you can just actually set your own width and height. If you go down to say like HDTV you actually get you know 920 by 1080 the uh, standard high definition stuff. So that's where that is if uh, you want to render out larger images rather than just 640 by 480. So here's our render straight out of uh, ZBrush using GoZ. I have one more thing I want to show you guys. I gotta load it in really quick. So here's the uh, model again. One quick thing I want to show you guys is that I have changed out the textures on the actual body from the ones that were imported in to apply a subsurface scattering material to it. One of the powers of Metal Ray is its actual ability to render subsurface scattering materials pretty fast. So if I come over to the actual material itself, I mean subsurface scattering is you know pretty typical. A number of values in here, most of them are default for this uh, shader that I have uh, hooked up here. The one thing I do want to kind of show, and if you guys are interested in learning, seeing how this is done, um, is actually I've linked all the materials that have been created for the subsurface scattering have been generated right out of ZBrush using mat caps and displacement maps. So if I click on the top layer of the skin, you can see I have this kind of texture going on. If I go to the subdermal, I've got more of a red. And then to the back, more of the blue. Now once again, all these are baked straight out of ZBrush with the matte caps. So these are actually matte cap colors that are being applied and then I've just exported them out and imported them into Max in order to uh, enhance the subsurface scattering material. So that's about it for uh, this session of uh, Did You Know That? If you have any questions or you'd like to see the uh, tutorial for uh, the matte cap stuff, just please post your uh, comments and questions in the uh, thread at ZBrush Central the Did You Know That thread. And once again, I hope that helps. It's a little simple Metal Ray primer. I uh, recommend going out and uh, learning more about Metal Ray. There's a lot of information on it online and also some great books that have been generated um, in using the program. One final thing, this uh, render was just extremely easy to create. Gozi is amazing. Just go in and click the button. Sends all your maps, all your models right into the 3D Studio Max, already ready to go with Metal Ray. And so all you have to do is just click one button and a few tweaks and settings that was in this video and you can end up with a quick render of your model done fairly fast and fairly painless. So, hope that helps. Thanks.